Greetings, everyone. It is I, Triple F Firestorm. It's been a while. I haven't really done a video in a while, but, um, well, I've been having a few upload problems with YouTube. So I'm basically doing one now, and I'm going to hope it's going to upload properly. So, we're basically, we're back for another um, Firestorm review. Or Firestorm reviews, depending on what you want to call it. Um, basically today I'm going to do uh, a bit of a review of three films that I've seen very recently. Well I say recently, all within like the last three days, so I'm going to really let you all know what they're about. Um, I'm going to start off with Prometheus. Uh, many people will probably have you know, seen the trailers, heard the hype, been wondering what is this film about. Well, best way for me to describe it is Prometheus is by the awesome Ridley Scott, creator of Alien, and it's set in the Alien universe, but it's kind of a origin film, but it's much more than an origin film. You, you know, it's kind of exploring essentially the concept of the engineers, the mysterious alien race, and how humanity was created, but also on a disclosed plotline, so to speak, it explains the origins of the aliens. It's essentially the film isn't really about the aliens, it's more about the origins of humanity and the mysteries of who these mysterious alien races that created it, created humanity. And I won't, I won't go into too much detail because essentially, you know, I've only been out, it's only got released like three days, no, four days ago, so I don't want to, um, spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen it. But the best way to describe this film is it's clever. It It's not essentially a film that's a prequel to Alien in the sense of the word. It's a film that has essentially the... it essentially sets, sets, the, sets the, the plot for Alien in a way. It is set on the planet that in the first film where they find all the, the alien eggs and everything, but you know, it is set on that planet. But I believe Prometheus is about like 40 years, I think, before Alien happens, something like that. And essentially, it's kind of a story of really humanity going out there to explore and following essentially a set of coordinates that have been found in ancient ruins across the planet. And they basically find this planet, and it's really the story of them finding out about this alien race that created humanity. But at the same time, it's also finding out the truth about what they were doing on this planet. So I'm not going to go into too much detail, but to put it up simply, you kind of learn how the alien race comes into existence. But it's kind of what you see is a very early origin, so to speak, of the species. You know, what you see is what you could only describe as the first evolution. <coughs> it has a lot of the characteristics, but clearly it's still got a while to go before it reaches the alien we know. So, essentially, all I can really say is go and see Prometheus because you're not just seeing a film that will explain the origins of the alien but will also essentially dive into the concepts of humanity's creation and the origin story with for the film works because there's that many origin stories for the aliens you know that have been written in books and are on the internet and this origin story that really Scott's come up with works because it's simple but at the same time it kind of answers a lot of questions as to why this, how they evolved the way they did. So, definitely go and see Prometheus. It is definitely worth seeing. You'll definitely enjoy it. You know, even if you've never seen the Alien films, which if you haven't, why haven't you seen them? Go and see them, then watch Prometheus, but so on. Anyway, digressing from the subject here. Right, next film I want to talk about is Men in Black 3. Now, Men in Black 3 uh, is kind of looking at it from two point of views here. It's a sequel, but it's kind of also a prequel. The way it kind of works is, again, don't want to divulge too much of the plot, it kind of start, it starts off 
obviously I think it's supposed to be so many years after the second film and it's kind of more of a um, looking into the past of Agent K because you kind of go back in time to the early days of the Men in Black organisation you know they're quite young they've only been around for maybe like 10 years and you know it's, it's really kind of exploring their early days but it's also a prequel in the sense as you find out a lot about K and you kind of also find out how he knows Jay would be a really good agent it's, it's kind of all about exactly how it's kind of like a prelude for the first film but 1969 and of course time travel is involved and you've kind of got um, some rather interesting paradoxes as well within the concepts of the plot but when it comes down to it the film in question is quite clever as it, it you can look at it as a sequel but also as a prequel because of the way, the way it progresses from essentially present day then obviously into the past and you've, you've got a lot more the development of the characters is described and how the characters become who they are in the future and, and essentially it, it dives into the concept of obviously future and past people meeting each other in the timeline and how obviously that's going to affect things so it is quite an all out clever film and obviously being it 1969, 10 years into the Men in Black organisation being set up um, you know, a lot of the stuff they're using is rather basic. I mean, you know, for instance, the denuralizer in uh, the '69 the denuralizer wasn't as advanced as it is obviously in the future. The funny thing about the denuralizer in '69 is it actually runs off a battery pack. You know, they had this like little battery pack it's connected to, and you had to charge it for it to actually work, which is rather amusing as you can imagine. So essentially, it's it's really explaining how Men in Black, how the organisation was in its early days and how they slowly progress and how K becomes the best agent of wars and how he kind of knew how J comes into it. It's all rather cleverly developed. So if you want to go and see a film which not only is a really good way of finishing off the franchise but also explains how it all began, definitely go and see Men in Black 3. You'll definitely enjoy it if you're a fan of the franchise. Okay, so um, moving on. Uh, film that I literally just saw today. Uh, Snow White and Huntsman. Now, um, obviously, interesting facts about this. Um, you know, when I was younger, when I was all little and innocent and all that, I watched the original Snow White cartoons film. You know, loved it. Watched it a lot actually. This film essentially is a live-action version of that film, but with what can only be described as a modern Lord of the Rings twist. It follows the actual plot of the original quite closely. It's got a lot of elements in there. You've got the Snow White escaping into dark forests and all the weird stuff happening with the trees coming alive and all the weird creatures, all that happens. And uh, you know, you've got the huntsman who's sent into the forest to look for her, and you've got the evil queen who's after her heart. But there's a lot, an element there of really Lord of the Rings because essentially, a lot of the, some of the creatures you come across are very Lord of the Rings like. You know, you have the dwarves, but you have trolls, and you have them. Um, you have an interesting concept where you actually meet what could have described as a, for a forest spirit or a guardian of the forest. That's quite an interesting concept for the film. The idea behind the film is really what kind of Snow White but crossed with a medieval Lord of the Rings style. And it, it does work. I mean, I give the film credit. It, it was an enjoyable film. I think the only real downside to it would be the... I think the the ending, kind of like the last 40 minutes of the film, kind of digress. I, I think I think you had the the feeling that you you know in the in the trailer you have this feeling of like you know going to be some epic battle with um you know good versus evil that kind of thing. It is like that, but I really think the concept of that could have been expanded upon. You know, I mean, the final fight with Snow White and the Snow White and the Evil Queen is. You know, it could have been better, but you know, what what can you want? What can you really ask for? I mean, you can't get everything perfect in a film. You know, certain films, Dragon Ball Evolution, uh, that was just awful. But we're not going to talk about that because that'll destroy everything. You know, we we don't want to go into that kind of concept. So with Snow White and the Huntsman, 
If you want to go and see essentially Snow White but with a modern twist, kind of like, like I said, Lord of the Rings kind of twist to it, go and see it. I mean, don't expect a film that is like Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, because it isn't. He do have the Seven Dwarfs in the film, but they're not the same as in the original. They've all got different names, they all look different. You know, they're not these happy go elves that mine things. They're essentially warriors. Okay, they, they were miners at one point, but they become warriors. So, you know, don't expect to see a film that's like the original. Expect to see a film that has the probably majority of the plot from the original, but it's been slightly twisted with, like I said, the fantasy Lord of the Rings style setting. So that's really all I can really say about Snow White and Man. Right, uh, okay, I think I should finish this video on a note of Avengers. Um, like I said, Avengers is probably one of the best films I've seen in a long time. Everybody needs to go and see it. If I could, I'd ring up the Queen and say, you know, I know it's your jubilee, but go and see Avengers. And after you've seen it, give the director a knighthood. And then imprison the director of um, Dragon Ball Evolution, because that, that'll make a lot of people happy. So, uh, that's pretty much all I've got to say for this video. Like I said, great three films, as I recommend them to a lot of people. So, you know, get out there, and explore the world, people, and don't be afraid to eat human flesh. That's all I can really say. So, peace out, and have a good one, people.